Well, last March, one of the great living sociologists in America, Charles Murray, went to Middlebury College in Vermont to deliver a lecture on America's growing class divide and the decline of the American working class. It's an important topic. He's covered it in a couple of books. And of course, the phenomenon has turned out to explain a lot about the rise of Donald Trump and many other political tremors shaping this country over the last decade. Murray's an important figure, that's not an overstatement. But instead of listening to any of this, the students rioted, attempted to block Murray's car, even hospitalized a professor who was escorting him out. Charles Murray has not appeared on television since that incident. He is here now. The man at the center of it all, Charles Murray, joins us tonight. Um, Charles Murray, thanks a lot for coming on. My pleasure. So, I guess what I was struck by was you've written a couple of books that, one book in particular that was controversial 20 years ago, 20 years ago, and when you wrote it, people, the left, freaked out, but they read the book and they responded to what was in it. They didn't some, like some it. Some of them did. Some of them did. Yeah, yeah. At least they pretended to. When you went to Middlebury, I didn't get the sense that anybody in the crowd had read anything you'd ever written. No, and some of them bragged about it. And by some of them, I mean faculty members. The, the faculty member who was leading the charge against me appearing there said, no, he'd never read a word I, uh, I'd written, but he still knew I was a bad guy. How did it unfold? We're, we've played this video a number of times. This, this incident kind of sums up a lot that's wrong with the country right now, I think. But you were there. What was that like? Well, I expected, uh, because I'd been briefed by the people at Middlebury, that the protests would occur. What, what we didn't know was whether they were going to keep it up forever. Yes. And my initial thought was, hell, I'll stand up here all night if I have to, to wait them out. Bill Berger, who was the uh, Middlebury's coordinator for all of this, rightly stopped it at about 20 minutes so that we went downstairs and, and presented the presentation on video uh, because they weren't going to stop. <laughs> they, they were going to go on all night. And what were they saying? What was their claim well, They had lots of different chants uh, and, and none of them were very memorable. Uh, they involved white supremacists and eugenicists and white nationalists and that kind of stuff. Uh, it was, I, I heard one of them call you anti-gay. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, first place, should I go on record and say, I'm not a white supremacist, I'm not a... I'm aware. Okay, okay. okay. It, it, it's, it's unreal. It's, it's been unreal, actually, for the last six months, where it's not that people are twisting things you have said they are making assertions about what you've said that bear no relationship to anything that you have said. Well, and in, and in fact, distorting what you're saying, almost inverting it. I mean, you made, I thought, a really powerful case against the American elites, the ruling class, people who run the country. I, I, I'm standing up there at Middlebury with this very elite student body, and I'm thinking to myself, you want to give a lecture dumping on the elite, and they're upset about that. This was not going to be a lecture uh, demonizing welfare mothers or things like that. I was going to say, you as members of the, the new elite have to be aware of all the, the ways in which the elite is screwing the working class in this country. How interesting. So 50 years ago, that, all, that would have been a message delivered most likely by someone on the yeah. left. Yeah. Now you're a fairly famous libertarian-ish person trying to deliver this and you get shouted down. What does that tell you about the current well, state well, the first, of the left? Well, a couple of points, Tucker. One of them is they didn't know what I was going to say. Yes. So it wasn't they were testing that message. Second thing is, remember, this was 100 to 200 kids out of 2,500. And so I think with all of these protests on campus, there is a large, I suspect, silent majority. What scares me is that they are cowed. Yes. And, and when I talk to students, and I think it's especially a problem at, in the humanities and the social sciences in elite universities, they tailor what they write in their term papers and what they say in class to what is in reality a lot of penalties the professors are prepared to impose on them if they say the wrong thing. What's so striking though is that this isn't happening in trade schools and it's not happening in lower tier schools. It's happening in schools that are the most expensive and the hardest to get into where the children of America's elite go. What does yeah. that tell you? Well, first place you've got the, you know, the science and technology majors right. versus the totally. social science slash, slash humanities and that's way different. And for that matter, Tucker, my daughter went to Middlebury graduated in 2007, she got a great education. She just had to pick her classes very carefully, and, and it worked. Uh, so there's a danger in this. What happened in Middlebury is not necessarily 
a, a you know, nationwide problem. But it is toxic in the sense that the whole notion of a university is that it is a safe space, if I may use that phrase, for intellectual discourse. That is the thing it's supposed to do. Yes. And, and you know, in thinking about Middlebury, a lot of the attention came to the mob that was outside where Professor Stanger got seriously hurt, and, and that was very scary. But that wasn't the most important event. The most important event was what went on in that lecture hall. The thing that went on outside, that was a thuggery. You know, yeah. a, felon, a criminal felony, and somebody should ju do jail time for it. But what went on inside that lecture hall was a repudiation of what the university is all about. It's terrifying. And, and the overarching irony is that your book, Coming Apart, provides the single clearest blueprint explaining why Trump got elected. It wasn't because of Vladimir Putin. It was because of the forces you describe in that book. And I wish their minds were open to hearing it. Because <laughs> because they'd be a lot better. Well, if they want to invite me back, I'd be glad to they go. They ought to. Charles Murray, thank you for that. Great to see you. My pleasure.